It's a turning future is something I've expressed increased skepticism about for years now. To a degree, it's kind of the only thing I've really done for it. But in spite of that, I still do love the series greatly and the memories it gave me. You see, what baffles me more than the shameless fan service and questionable narrative decisions is honestly just how little this series has pushed itself forward in the past few years. I mean, yeah, it looks prettier, but ultimately it's still the same old game. And because new titles are infrequent, the rate in which Age of Tony changes feels incredibly slow. In an interview with Takeshi Yamazaki, he states that the team works on a new mechanic for the game first. And I get why they do this, as each Age of Tony game needs a selling point. Justice for All introduced the Magatama, uh, Trials and Tribulations gave you two lawyers, Apollo Justice does the perceived thing again, Dual Destinies have the Moon Matrix and 3D investigations, so on and so forth. But I don't actually think this is an effective way of designing these games. These titles shouldn't be sold on character return trailers and gameplay gimmicks. That isn't sustainable. After the nth re-release of the Ace Attorney trilogy, the second season of the anime, and Phoenix Wright iconography coming back hard enough to make Sonic look subtle by comparison, it's clear to me that this formula doesn't really have much of a future, with Spirit of Justice really being the personification of this confusion. With its failed attempt at appeasing everyone through its narrative, all it really left was a bad taste in my mouth. Playing up Phoenix's turn about terror only for him to be haphazardly replaced with Apollo at the last minute, giving him an awfully contrived backstory all while relegating Athena to irrelevance. Spear of Justice makes it clear that Ace Attorney is completely incapable of balancing free protagonists with its archaic structure. So, instead of berating the recent Ace Attorney output, I figure it's a much more productive use of our time to reevaluate not only how Ace Attorney is presented, but how we can expand Ace Attorney beyond its archaic structure into something that's both recognisable, but pushes the series forward. It should be made immediately clear that it isn't my intention to map out the perfect visual novel. This isn't my ideal mystery visual novel. The framework I'm using is specifically and pertains to how Ace Attorney can improve itself. Secondly, I'm ignoring my own biases. Look, like if it, if, if it was up to me, this whole shit is just getting rebooted. Like, I'm, <laughs> I'm just being serious. So this is what we like to call compromise. I'll start with structure. Ace Attorney could benefit from a campaign mode. The one and done linear story progression the series has followed since its inception has long worn out as welcome in my opinion. Primarily because the series began to market itself with the idea of multiple playable lawyers. The inherent issue with this is how much time you actually get to spend playing as them. Athena arguably suffers the most from this. Dual Destinies is marketed with free playable lawyers, but you get to play Athena in like... One? Maybe the beginning of the first one, but even then you don't really do anything. Then there's Athena's role in Spear of Justice. Her case is completely isolated from the main narrative, so any attempts to push her character forward feel completely unfocused and derivative. Another adverse effect of this is the case of Apollo Justice. His character being a victim of any game he's tied to, contrived to fit each respective game's narrative. And what you're left with is a character that feels aimless and lacks a clear sense of direction. There's no clear story being told of Apollo. He's just a series of backstories made to fit the game he's in. So how does introducing a campaign mode fix this? Well, each character can have their own separate story for one. One where they get to be the focus, have a clear arc and a set of cases to follow. Now naturally, five cases each would be too much for each character, so I think, I think three would be more ideal. Now a counter argument you're probably going to see to this is, three cases is too short, it would be underwhelming. I don't think so, and there's quite a number of reasons why. For stars, the third case is typically when the pacing in these Ace Attorney cases tends to suffer. Turnabout Samurai is notoriously padded out and lengthy. Turnabout Big Top is a drag to play. So recipe for Turnabout, while fun, still feels like a decent length. Turnabout Serenade is far too long with horrible pacing. Turnabout Academy, I mean, <laughs> I mean, come on. <laughs> and similar to Academy, the first day of the right turnabout is a complete waste of time. And while the argument can certainly be made that this is as a result of poorly created cases, I think it'd be disingenuous to not only attribute this to the sudden shift in length from case 2 to case 3. It doesn't surprise me that a majority of case 4s after this would harbour a shorter mini case as to not drag down the game. But even if you don't agree with this, due to the campaign structure, the means in which you reach case 3 could be much less linear. Specifically the order in which you complete cases. Certain campaigns could be locked at the beginning of the game, only unlocking them as you completed certain cases. Kind of like a kind of like a threshold. I've been playing a lot of Pokemon recently, so I'll give an example from there. It's kind of like after you've beaten a few gyms and you unlock two towns with two different gyms. Let's say the fifth and the sixth gym. Now the game won't let you advance to the seventh gym unless you've beaten both gyms, but the order in which you complete them is completely up to you. Similarly, let's, let, let's apply that same game design logic to Ace Attorney. Perhaps there's a point in the game where you unlock Apollo's second case and Athena's first case. Now in order to unlock Athena's second case, you need to complete both cases. But the order in which you complete them is completely up to you. It's an artificial sense of non-linearity, while still giving a threshold that the player needs to meet. And there's quite a few advantages to this. 
For one, it allows the fans to personalise their experience. Like, oh, I chose to do Apollo's second case first because I really liked his first one. Or I swapped over to Athena when I unlocked her because I wanted to see how different Kurayin was to Athena's experience in California. Secondly, it completely alleviates the issues pertaining to first case syndrome. Suddenly, the first case of each campaign doesn't have to be patronisingly easy, re-explaining the same basic testimony mechanics with each new title. Suddenly, case 2 doesn't mean the second easiest case. Case 2 of Phoenix's campaign can easily be the one that gives you the most shit. But notice how breaking these archaic conventions which Ace Attorney has tied itself down to can completely benefit the game in more ways than one. I would even argue that's a selling point. Now even if you don't like the stuff they're doing with Phoenix, you can look forward to Apollo's campaign. Don't like Apollo's stuff? That's always Athena. And through giving your players these options, you allow them to get a complete experience as their ideal Ace Attorney protagonist. And even if you don't like the idea, you have to agree that it's a bigger selling point than whatever uninspired testimony mechanic of the week they're pulling now. Like, let's be honest, when you saw Spirit of Justin being marketed, you weren't thinking, man, that divination seance. And if you do like some of these ideas, it's to give you an idea of what Ace Attorney could be if it actually had the ambition to aspire to be more than what its archaic legacy has defined it as. It's been four years since Spirit of Justice, they're perfectly capable of doing so. The first case of each campaign doesn't even need an investigation segment. And for those who think that'd be underwhelming, I'd welcome you to look at the Ace Attorney fan case community and tell me that. There's an incredible amount of creativity in cases done with very little resources and imagination. We don't need to keep praising turn about Trump. Like, dream bigger. But naturally, a reinvented narrative structure wouldn't automatically invalidate the issues and pertains to cases. While fan service is far from the primary issue with Ace Attorney cases, for me to deny it as a factor would be ridiculous. The next title is going to be the 20th anniversary title. They've been shoving trilogy iconography down our throats so hard, it's it's almost scary. My reboot dreams are dead. They're just they're just not happening. So instead, let's look at ways that we can manage the fan service from becoming intrusive to the narrative. Because let's be, you know, let's, because let's not lie to ourselves, it is. I could have had Phoenix participating in underground mafia trials, but we got Kura Yin because Maya had to come back. And by extension, Apollo got a forced backstory. And don't tell me that's not what happened, because that's exactly how it happened and you know it is. Ironically, a solution to this problem lies in the problematic title itself, Dual Destinies. There's a really nice moment in Dual Destinies that gets overlooked nowadays, probably because Maya actually returned. But it's the moment where Phoenix returns to the office to take a break from everything going on and he receives a letter from Maya. It's fan service, but it isn't intrusive, it isn't tied to the grand narrative, and I think it's the key to giving Ace Attorney the freedom to fan service while not obstructing the main story. I think Ace Attorney should introduce a letter system. If you return to the right anything agency or any agency within the game, you could check to see if you got a letter. This letter could be from anyone. For example, it could be from Iris. I know people want her back. <laughs> okay, and you get to read this letter, and it's ambiguous enough for the new player, but the longtime fan will understand who it is just from the dialect. So like, if you're new to the series and you read this, you're probably gonna go, who's this, and why does Phoenix recognize them? But when I read the line, pal, I already know that's gumshoe. It's a tasteful reference, and it's not made intrusive because it's optional. You don't have to return to the office to see it. Okay, but that ruins the pace of the game. You'd be going back and forth just to see these references. And all I have to say is, you don't have to see them. Most people would just look at, I'm gonna keep it real, most people are just gonna look them up on YouTube anyway. But then another counter argument comes through. What incentive is there to go out of your way to find these references in the first place? And this is where we introduce a new mechanic, unlockables. This, this should just be a thing. Ace Attorney has no reason not to. Why does Ace Attorney sell 99p character skins? It's so ridiculous. Do you really need that $2? <laughs> Similar to the idea of unlocking cases and campaigns as you progress, it would benefit the game so much to have this level of customization. And it feels like that's what it wants. It feels like it wants more than this. Again, Dual Destinies has something close to this, where if you beat the DLC, you unlock the College Phoenix outfit. It's superficial, but it has a lot of charm. A lot of these outfits do, and you have so much to pick from. What's the point in having an outfit section if you're going to limit it to one outfit per game? It's it's so stupid. Make them unlockables. You know the iris idea? So let's say you go out of your way for that and you unlock the head wrap from Bitch to the Turnabout. And if you really want to go crazy, let people mix and match the outfits to make something really silly. Ace Attorney thrives off out of context lines for meme material. Imagine how much fun people would have with Phoenix saying the line, I take the fate of my clients very seriously, while he's wearing an eye patch, samurai swords and a face mask. 
It's these little details that go a long way in adding a level of charm to the game, while not exactly shoving it down the player's throat. The beauty of this idea is now you don't even have to design a 3D model of an old character for the sake of a callback. It could be an illustration, it could be just the letter and the character's reaction to it. It would not only add a stronger level of continuity to the experiences of these characters, but allow them to exist without being intrusive. Because while I absolutely detest the idea of old characters shoving their way back into these stories, I'm not stupid. I understand why Ace Attorney fans are so desperate for them to return. They want their experiences to feel validated and important. Nobody likes to be forgotten. Oh no, it's, it's a really stupid argument, but I do get it. I'm an Apollo Justice fan. I haven't felt validated in 10 years. So as a compromise, I think this works. This is something I never thought I'd hear myself say. Now some people might be thinking, you hypocrite, you want this series to be weeb garbage, don't talk to me. Look, shut up and listen. When I refer to social links, I'm not actually referring to persona dating sims. And I'm much more referring to this idea of returning to existing locations to interact with and strengthen the bonds with existing characters within the game. I don't know, maybe I've just been playing too much Persona though. <laughs> like, if, do you guys ever make it to the credits of an Ace Attorney game and they show off all the characters that survived again and you just kind of... Feeling really indifferent, like I'm sorry, Jinxie didn't leave that much of an impression. But I think a cool way to alleviate this is giving us the option to return to pre-existing locations within a case. Naturally, make the distinction between set locations clear, but in doing this, you can actually physically see the impact of what your defense did to the community of people. After all, it's just only always wants you to believe that you've made a real impact in these people's lives. But because after the courtroom lobby you run off to have instant noodles, it's really difficult to feel like you've done anything significant. But by giving us the ability to go back to previous locations, you've given the opportunity to breathe new life into existing areas within the game. It doesn't have to be long or intrusive, a minor distraction. Again, the incentive would be more cosmetics, more unlockable outfits. Let's say case 1 of Phoenix's campaign is set in a train station. If in case 2 you decide to go back there, you unlock Phoenix's train station outfit. Alright, to use an existing example, let's say during Turnabout Academy you went back to Nine Tails Vale because you're insane. And because you went out of your way and interacted with Jinxie, who's much happier now after you saved her dad, you unlock Apollo's street outfit. And again, notice how none of this is actually necessary. You're free to ignore all of this and just continue with the main game. Do Destiny's introduced the notepad feature. You know exactly what you need to do and it's always clear in the UI when you're deviating from the actual case. It's a cool idea and I think it'd do a lot in fleshing out the world of these characters and giving you more incentive to care about it. I want to make it clear that none of these changes are necessarily a necessity for Ace Attorney moving forward. Ace Attorney could do all of these things in its next generation debut, and it could still be doo doo or. So the obvious response would be, then what's the point? Well there's a few. This is a compromise that would help alleviate Ace Attorney of many of its inherent issues with its archaic structure. Suddenly you don't have to fit everything in one messy narrative. The fan service, the progression, everything in between, it could all have a separate narrative and work to the strength of each respective character. While there still would be fan service, it would be completely relegated to the optimal material that you have to go out of your way to find. You can ignore it if you want, and if you do go out of your way for it, just hide a few within the cases, it incentivizes exploration. I recently replayed the first trial of Danganronpa V3. Now the reason I did this... B, B, press mash it, mash it! I must it, it didn't do shit! ...was because I... <laughs> I wasn't exactly in the best state while playing it, and I wanted to be able to have an actual opinion on the case. But something I immediately noticed while replaying it was I was earning mono points, which I could use to spend more money on items for free times. Therefore, there was an incentive to replay the class trials, regardless of the shitty mechanics. Ace Attorney, I mean, Ace Attorney doesn't have that. For all intents and purposes, once you've beaten an Ace Attorney game, you have very little reason to replay it unless you're insane like me. I think by giving people non-linear choices, hidden easter eggs, and rewarding them with unlockables, you can incentivize replay value. And the more people replay these cases, I think it creates a stronger conversation around them. You might have replayed a case in Apollo's campaign to unlock an outfit, and then you realise, oh, I think this scene could have been cut out, it doesn't really add anything to the case. Hmm, I don't understand the plan of the culprit here, it feels too specific and down to luck. And would you look at that, the standard of Ace Attorney cases suddenly increases. Then, instead of the tired conversation of which trilogy character we're going to bring back next, it becomes the developers striving to iron out the kinks within their cases. Now, some of this stuff wouldn't fly anymore because people are paying more attention. And just like that, not only would Ace Attorney have evolved beyond the trilogy structure, but it would cultivate a community that actually cares about how these cases are designed. But like most things, that's just an ideal. That's just a dream. And it's not very likely. Ace Attorney is heading into next generation territory, and has been getting away with doing so little for so long, doing the bare minimum expected. One advantage of the 90th re-release of the Ace Attorney trilogy is that Ace Attorney is officially a multi-platform title. 
and being almost 5 years removed from the most recent mainline title, I think it's time we start asking for something bigger. I play games like Danganronpa, Persona, Zero Escape, all these visual novel esque games and all I think is man, like, Ace Attorney is so much better than this, so why doesn't it just prove it? Ace Attorney is so afraid to break past its tradition and it's consistently what holds it back. It's been nearly 20 years and Ace Attorney still plays almost the exact same way as it did in its first outing. Ace Attorney 7, I'll be blunt, I don't think I'm gonna let it get away with just being the same thing but prettier. Nothing I said in this video feels unrealistic. It's been so long since the last main series Ace Attorney game that my channel isn't even primarily about Ace Attorney anymore. Really think about that. I know I have. And the question I find myself asking is, is Ace Attorney and its general fandom content with sticking to the same tradition it's had for 19 years? Or after 4 years of waiting, do we have the ambition to yearn for something bigger? I'm not here to tell you the answer. I just think it's interesting to think about. Ooh, I'm the token, black guy, that's right, tell the whole world. Kiss my backside, watch your girl, spread like Wi-Fi, easy as pie. Who let the fat guy loose? Back to black roots, back to stack rats and pack them black coops. Attack, we contract, you back in black suits. I am what I am, I'm Zeus and Jesus, what it do?